I have to talk about bone grafts very frequently on a day-to-day -day basis here. And the reason for that uh, is because we wanna make sure that you always have all the teeth that you should have. And when you lose a tooth, that bone that used to hold that tooth starts to dissolve away. It exists only to hold that tooth. So when the tooth's gone, it starts to atrophy and, and we start having issues with putting an implant there to give you your tooth back. So that's why we talk about bone grafts because if you don't have enough bone, we can generally rebuild enough to allow the implant to be placed where it should be to give you the tooth that you need. Um, but there's also a lot of different types of bone grafts and people always wanna know, uh, you know what, am, what am I talking about when I say bone graft? And there's a pretty big spectrum there. Um, the, easiest, most straightforward, least expensive, least painful kind of thing in the world is when the tooth comes out, that very same minute, we put in a bone graft. And that means we're just filling the socket that used to hold the tooth with bone. And um, the analogy that I, I give my patients on a, a pretty daily basis is, you know, if I asked you to build a wall and just gave you nothing, you'd have to wander around and find rocks and assemble your wall, right? Or if I gave you a pallet of bricks and said, build a wall, you can assemble a really good one really quickly. That's kind of what I'm doing for your body. I'm giving the bone right there, all of the materials it's needing to build you good quality bone in an, in an adequate amount to give us a really good predictable implant site uh, down the road. So that is, um, that's what we call a site preservation, meaning we're preserving that bone that would normally shrink away uh, so that we can put an implant in pretty shortly thereafter. That's really, really common and highly recommended. Uh, and people are always like, well, am I a candidate for that? Pretty much everybody's a candidate for that. And then they always want to know, well, what, what is it? You know? And there's lots of different kinds of bone graft. Bone graft can come from you. It can come from a cadaver, which is also pretty common. That always freaks people out a little bit. Don't sweat it. What it is, is it's very sterile bone chips that technically, yes, they do come from a cadaver, but when we put it in there, I'm giving you that pallet full of bricks, your body will break that bone down and reassemble it as part of you. So if we came back and took a biopsy of that bone six months down the road, it's you. It's 100% you. You're not walking around with Joe over here. You know, like people are always so weirded out by that, but it's, it will be absolutely your bone. Does it have to be cadaver? No, it doesn't. There's also other types. We can do um, what's called a xenograft, which is just a fancy way of saying from a different species. So uh, bovine is really common, pig bone, whatever. If that freaks you out too, there's synthetic grafts. Um, that's where we, we use pretty much a, the mineral components that bones assembled from. We put that right there and your body can build it too. So, you know, whatever your, your hang up is with whatever the, the type of bone graft is, let's talk about it because we do have a lot of options and we can make that a, a non weird event for you. But it is a really important thing so that you get a good predictable outcome. Um, there are also more extensive kinds of bone grafting that it's hard to explain it here when we're not in person looking at your scenario, but know that if you're missing width, if you're missing height, if you have a large sinus where an upper molar used to be, um, we can fix pretty much all of those things. So come in, let's talk about it. And uh, just know that about 60% of implants require some level of bone grafting. So it's really common. It's not a, not a, a weird or hard thing. You know, we, we do it routinely and, uh, and we can talk about what fits your scenario best.